Welcome back to Reading Bear. Today, we will take a look at some new I do work here lady stories. And if you enjoyed my content, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and post some bear emojis in the comments. Let's go! The first story is titled, Scammer insists I don't work at the bank. I work at a bank and one of the most common queries we get from customers is if a phone call they have received is actually from us or a scam. This happened when I had only been working at the bank for a few months, but a customer came in saying he'd been getting multiple phone calls a day from the bank saying he needed to transfer money out to a safe account so came in to see what was actually going on. After checking records, it definitely was not us calling him, top tip, your bank would never ask you to transfer money anywhere. I told him to stop answering the phone and just block the number. It was at this point they tried calling him again, so we decided to have some fun. Customer answered the phone and the scammer started the spiel that he needed to go into the bank and transfer money straight away, it was urgent, but to tell us that the money was for family. He replied, well I'm actually in the bank right now. I'll hand you to the cashier and you can tell her the details. I didn't know what to expect down the other end of the phone but after introducing myself to the scammer, who at this point was probs in a panic, they started cursing me and telling me it was wrong for me to pretend to work for a bank, how dare I put people in danger and try to steal their money. I then pointed out that it was he in fact that was doing that and again got, you don't work for the bank. You are a scammer. Blah blah blah. The customer and I let him go on for another minute and then just hung up. Surprisingly this has happened to other colleagues of mine, I don't know what the scammers think they are going to achieve at this point cause the customer is obviously not going to believe from an anonymous person on the phone that the fully uniformed employee in front of them doesn't work for the bank but who knows. Arguing back with scammers can be a bit of fun for us, especially knowing some of the damage they cause. The next story is titled, Owner loves to tell people he is the owner. Background info. I work for a local hobby and game store. We have several different staff shirts with our store logo on them but we aren't required to wear them unless a big event is going on, but we also sell different shirts that have our logo on them so, intentionally, it is easy for employees to blend in with customers for loss prevention and a casual atmosphere. The owners rarely wear staff shirts but are proud of their business and wear our for sale shirts regularly when they are in the building. Before the COVID stuff we had a bunch of people come in every day to use our open tables to play games and hang out. So occasionally we get colorful characters or Karens, Kens etc. One of the owners loves coming up to problem people and acting like a fellow customer so he can give them just enough perceived support for them to show their true colors and then drop the, hi, my name is, see, I'm the owner of this store. Get out of my store and don't come back. It is like his favorite thing to watch these people go from confident to confused to, I'm going to get your manager, to, oh wait did he say owner, to embarrassed and angry to meekly leaving the store. When we were smaller, he used to use a bit more intimidating language, but he still is a big guy and can be very intimidating with just his presence when he wants to be. There are so many great stories and I'll probably get around to posting more at some point, but this is my current favorite. Some small details like names are edited for privacy stuff. Two groups of kids are opening the newest set of Magic, The Gathering, a collectible card game, first group is around the 10 to young teenage range and the second was older teens pushing 19 to 20-ish. Both groups were having a good time opening good stuff and getting excited. There were some other people playing Magic and also a few other games too. One of the older kids hears one of the younger talking about getting a specific card and offers to trade with them for one of the cards he got. Both groups are new to the game so neither could possibly know what the value of the cards are but I do and so does the owner who is sitting a few tables away playing a game with his friends. The older kid is trading away a trash card for a card worth like $50 but neither know that. The owner pipes up that just trading one for one without knowing the value of the cards is always a bad idea for both parties and directs them to a website they can use to check the prices. They do and the older kid is legitimately upset he almost ripped the other kid off. The owner tells them that until they get more experience with the game that it is probably a pretty good idea to just not trade. They both thank him and go back to playing. Situation over everyone happy. Until one of our fairly regular colorful characters, CC, decides to involve himself. This guy has never been ill-intentioned but always makes people uncomfortable by being a bit too forward or inviting himself into conversations or games with people he doesn't know. 
And since the situation is pretty much resolved the only way to keep the conversation going is to take an opposing viewpoint. CC starts arguing somehow that it is absolutely okay to trade away stuff you don't know the value of as long as you think you are getting a good deal. The owner is very confused as he hasn't interacted with CC before and asks him point blank if he thinks it is okay for people to cheat children. CC says yes, just happy to be having a conversation and in his mind I guess whining the argument. Owner uses his signature line, well then, hi I'm, name, I'm the owner. Get out of my store and never come back. CC is so shook he leaves without another word. But of course the tale continues because another one of our sketchier almost regular guys tries to argue with the owner that it was unfair of him to ban CC just because he was okay with cheating children. It wasn't like he actually cheated himself he was just okay with it. Owner is even more confused by this point of view and very frustrated at this point and says, well as I just said, I'm, name, I'm the owner. And if you really think I should allow people in my store who are okay with cheating other customers especially children then you can get out and not come back too. They argue for a bit more and the owner tells me to call the cops to get this other guy out of the store. Before I can pick up the phone the guy leaves. Owner gets loud and says to the enter store, anyone who thinks it is okay to rip off children in my store should leave and not come back. As he goes to sit back down to play his game parents of the younger group of kids come up and thank him. At some point those parents left a review of our store, 5 5th stars. The next story is titled, Karen vs a lemonade stand. So my little brother who is 6 wanted to open up a lemonade stand BC he wants to make his own business one day. He hired me as an employee, co-owner, cause I built the stand out of wood and he decorated it. My little brother and I don't look alike, he is skinny with glasses and I am built up and much stronger than him. This is important. So about a few hours into the day and we've made about $15, mostly tips BC people love my little brother, and a lady walks up to the stand with a young child with her and demand a Dr. Pepper. My brother politely told her that all there is, is lemonade. She makes the, TSK, sound and says, well then take you money and go to the 7-Eleven and get me a lemonade right now. And go fast. I step in and tell her if she wants the lemonade or not. When she sees me she go insane. She demands to speak with my mother BC I was being a little punk. My dad hears her yelling and rushes outside to see what's going on. She says, your child called me fat, female dog, and a, c word. I demand you give me $1000 for compensation. And yes she did say the b word and the c word in front of a 6 years old. My dad and Karen argue for about 10 minutes when Karen's kid steps up to say, Mommy, they didn't say that you're lying. She then smacks her kid in the face and says, Shut up, I'm trying to get you free, S word. My dad then threatens to call the cops on her for harassment and she walks away pissed. The next story is titled, These are the fasteners you're looking for. I'm in my late 30s, a woman, and very tall. People tell me I look like I'm in my 20s, but I just laugh about it and take it as a compliment. I used to work at Home Depot in the hardware section, and if you have ever been an employee at HD, you know there's a lot of training, and a lot to learn. Luckily, I worked construction as a teenager, and was already familiar with percent 80 of the products in my department, and a lot of products in other departments. I loved my job, and loved learning about different products, and what makes this tool better than that tool. Working the op, and the lift, was my favorite thing, and I even had a fan base of little kids who thought I was pretty cool for being a girl who drove machines. Super sweet, actually. They crowned me princess of hardware, to which my supervisor said, if there's a princess of hardware, it's me. Lol. I told him that's fine, but he has to wear the crown. Fast forward to the middle of the workday, and I'm chugging along, bringing down boxes, and spider wrapping them. I notice an older man looking a bit lost down the fastener aisle, and walk up to him. Can I help you find something? I ask. No, I'm okay. He says, so I ask the next person if I can help them. I'm pointing out which screws to get, and I notice the same man still wandering up, and down, the aisle, looking very lost. You sure you don't need any help, sir? I ask again. No, I don't need your help. Thank you. He stomps off the way only fragile, old, white men, can, and I go on about my job. Someone asks me if I know where something is in my section, but the place we keep it is empty. I walk them to garden, which sometimes has it, because we keep it in different spots around the store. 
Hardware is next to lumber, at one end and garden is AAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAAA
Why did he lie to me about not working here? This time I hear her loud and clear. Karen, what are you, ducking retarded? I had to bite my tongue to keep from bursting out laughing, thank goodness for my mask, or she would have seen. Turns out my previous assessment about her not caring about being PC was 100% spot on. Me, only slightly ma'am. What can I help you with? She gives me a look that says, don't try any more funny business with me, and then asks me where the restroom is. I pointed her in the right direction and then spent the rest of my shift thinking about how retarded I am. The next story is titled, I'm a robber, cousin story. From his perspective. This story took place five to six years ago, when I was more naive and antisocial. I surprisingly OT a sessional job at a major grocery store. All right, first day on the job I'm excited, I'm pumped up and I start at 3 a.m., oh god. I didn't have a driver license yet so I rode my bike which is an easy 15 minutes. One thing to note is, a hokey mask, a reflective jacket, and gloves. Anyways, as I finally arrive at work I notice six female co-workers, who are close to the entrance. I pay them no mind and begin to lock my bike. As I'm locking my bike, I notice they're looking at me scared and slowly creeping to the door. Me being the complete dum-dum I am, not noticing I still have my damn mask on realize thinking, oh, I haven't introduced myself yet. I take off my mask and say, hi I'm op, I'm a new seasonal worker. When they realized I do work here they laughed and explained they thought I was going to rob the store. What? We had a good laugh and I enjoyed the entire time I was there. The next story is titled, Why Aren't You Done Yet? So this took place back when I was 22 I'm 32 now. OK cast me equals me, RC equals rude customer, M equals manager. OK so I was working as a tire tech at a major tire store here in the US mostly in the south. This took place on a holiday weekend sale you know buy three tire get the fourth tire free. So I had just lifted a car in the air it needed an oil change and four new tires. I started to drain the oil when a guy comes into the shop which is a big safe no no. RC I've been waiting for 20 minutes why isn't my car ready yet? Me I apologize sir I just got your car in and just drawn to drain the oil. RC my car should be done already. Me sir we are backed up today due to the holiday sales special. RC that's no excuse you should be done. Sir an oil change at 4 new tires takes up to 30 to 45 minutes they told you this when you sign the paperwork up front. RC fine but be quick I'll be back to check. 5 minutes later RC why aren't you done yet? Me just getting 2 tires off the car. Me sir I told you they will let you know once your car is ready. RC fine he heads back up front again. He comes back 2 more times 5 minutes apiece. I know it was 5 minutes apiece because I set my watch by it. The fourth time he comes back I just finished mounting the new tires on the rims. He yells why aren't you done yet? At that point I've had it I turn around and yell at him because you keep coming back and stopping me from working. Then I go over to my toolbox and pull out the largest wrench I have it's a 22mm wrench. I then tell him if you come back here one more time I'm going to slam this into your skull and when the paramedics come to get you I'm going to tell them to give me my wrench back before they go so I can work. At that point RC is furious at me and demands and yells to speak to my manager. My manager comes out from the warehouse where we keep all the tires it's right behind me. Manager sir what seems to be the issue? RC your employee threatened to hurt me I demand for this to be free and for him to be fired. M looks at me and looks at RC. I know the whole thing he says to RC I've heard every bit of it and I've seen you harass him repeatedly. If he wasn't almost done with your car I would have him drop it back on the ground row it out and tell you to leave the premises immediately but seeing how it's almost done who got finish up you will then pay your bill and then you'll be banned from this location in all other locations belonging to said corporate tire chain. At that point RC shut his trap turned around and walked out of the shop. It didn't hurt that my manager was over six and a half feet tall and a Vietnam veteran. I wound up closing that night after we closed me and the rest of the closing shift went to the bar right behind the shop I told everyone the whole story half were amazed in the other half just couldn't stop laughing. I'm still friends with a couple of the guys there on Facebook and we still joke about it to this day. The next story is titled Airline Pilot. My daughter and I were flying to visit my mill in Florida. The last leg of our journey was in a puddle jumper small enough that they even weighed our purses. 
We were sitting in our seats along with another woman and her two daughters when a young woman in a white shirt climbed into the cockpit. The other woman leaned over, tapped her on the shoulders D said, I believe that is the pilot's seat, young lady. You will have to move. The young woman turned around and said, I am the pilot. The other woman then asked if she was old enough to fly. The pilot repeated, I am the pilot, lady. And not only was she a good pilot, but we hit a thunderstorm on the way that we barely felt. The next story is titled, Black People Live Here, and Work Here. I worked as a leasing agent for a garden-style apartment community for about four months. It wasn't a great property by any means. The apartments were fine, and the amenities were pretty outdated. The point is, we would get all sorts of different people to come in and look around. One day, this young white couple comes in looking for an apartment. Very sweet, pleasant, and mannerly. We view a few one-bedrooms, the amenities, and discuss lease options. We are wrapping up the tour by the door that leads out of the office when the young woman asked one last question, so are there any, um, black people that live here? Lots of things immediately started flooding my brain, but in my position there is only one correct answer. For those that don't know leasing agents are bound by fair housing laws and cannot answer this question saying, yes, or, no, as it would be racially discriminatory. I replied, anyone that fills out an application and passes our income and background check is allowed to lease here. She became frustrated, and said, right, I get it, but do black people live here or not? As she was saying this my assistant manager, who is black, and does live on the property, walked into the offices by chance on her day off and overheard the young woman ask me if black people live here. Well, my assistant manager just walked up, held out her hand and said, yes. Hi, my name is, name. The couple immediately stammered through damage control. Ah you see we just, cue super awkward moment, but the icing on the cake. Under her breath, the young woman asked me, your manager approves of this. I looked at her, then at my assistant manager, then back at the woman, pointed at my assistant manager and said, she's the manager. You can ask her yourself if she approves of herself living here. They left without saying another word. My assistant manager and I laughed about it for weeks after. Ducking racists. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel and post some bear emojis in the comment.